Can you buy a ground mount solar kit for less than you can build one DIY yourself? Let's find out. Oh, let's stick around the end. If you want to save some money on ordering a ground mount solar kit and learn an easy way to cut your solar wiring costs in half. Yeah, I'm out here on a dark, dreary, overcast January day. And this is a great reminder that this is the time when we really need a significant number of panels in our DIY solar system in order to recharge our batteries in poor weather. These 24 panels I have out here are generating somewhere from 1,000 to 2,400 watts right now in these overcast conditions. And that's less than 25% of the max rated power, but it's still enough to run the house and keep charging up the batteries. You may not have enough roof area to mount enough panels for off-grid solar, so you'll need to take a look at ground mounting more solar panels. Ground mounting your solar panels is more expensive. There are very few ways to do it for less than the cost of a typical roof mounting installation since the ground mounting lacks the base and support of the building sitting under the roof. Last year, we designed and built a 12 panel DIY adjustable ground mount system from scratch. And you can see that video here. That's what it looks like right there. Signature Solar sells one of the lowest priced ground mount kits called the EG4 Bright Mount Kit. I purchased one of these last year to test it out with my 405 watt panels. And I found out immediately that all four panels would not fit because they were over 44 inches wide. Luckily, they came out with an extension kit, and the extension kit increased the total length of the bright mount kit enough to mount four 45-inch wide panels. Ecstatic about that, I tried out the extension kit and immediately purchased two more of the EG4 bright mount solar racks from Signature Solar because I wanted to try to build a low-cost solar array with a dozen more panels. Newsflash! We stop this regularly scheduled video to bring you the following urgent message. If you are considering purchasing the bright mount solar panel rack, you need to be aware of some significant changes that happened at the time of this video was posted. At the end of 2024, the design of the bright mount rack was changed slightly, and the upgraded version is now called the bright mount Cat 1 solar panel ground mount. The Cat 1 version has been slightly modified, and this new version features several changes, including integrated and pre-assembled support arms, a different hole spacing on the base foot plates, and a redesigned solar panel mounting rail. This is very important to know, because at the time of this video, in January 2025, the new Cat 1 bright mount kit is on back order and the Cat1 Bright Mount Extension Kit is not yet available on the Signature Solar website. If you've already received your Bright Mount Kit ordered prior to 2025, the correct kit would be one that does not include the Cat1 designation. Only the Cat1 Extension Kit will fit the redesigned Cat1 Bright Mount Kit. So, if you're ordering the Bright Mount Kit today, you will be getting the Cat1 Bright Mount Kit, and you should wait to order the Extension Kit until you see the Cat1 Bright Mount Extension Kit available on the Signature Solar website. These changes are in progress right now in 2025, and I wanted to make sure anyone ordering the new Bright Mount Kit doesn't order the old Extension Kit, as it won't properly fit. Again, if you order the Cat1 Bright Mount Kit, wait to order the Extension Kit until the Cat1 Bright Mount Extension Kit is available on the website. Now back to the video. So let's go through the process of building a 12-panel solar array using the EG4 Bright Mount Kit from Signature Solar. Assembling the Bright Mount Kit is easy. There are a few things that will expedite the process though. The kit comes with no instructions, so you have to print those out off the EG4 website. See the link in this video description. When you're building the Bright Mount Kit, pay attention to both end pieces that mount on the main support beams and to what size bolts go into different brackets. If you get one wrong, you'll find the next bolt will be too long or too short. Honestly, the Bright Mount Kit is easier to assemble than most furniture or kids' toys, but give yourself plenty of room to lay out the parts in view. Before you go any further, make sure you know the width of the panels that you intend to mount. If they're 44 inches or greater in width, I highly recommend you order the extension kit when you order the Bright Mount Kit. Since my panels were more than 44 inches in width, I had to add an extension kit to each of the three Bright Mount racks. You have to order these separately, but they're, they're not expensive, and you'll save shipping costs if you order at the same time you order your bright mount kit. See the link in the video description. If you plan to join two or more kits together, you will need to also order the splice and bonding jumper kit separately. Do this when you order the multiple bright mount kits to save shipping costs. There's a link in the video description for that part. The extension and splice kit are easy to install and the extension kit should probably go between the two bright mount kit pieces to give the strongest support. It'll work on the end, but it's really your call based on how many of the bright mount kits you're actually joining together. The extension kit comes with screws, but after installing several extension kits, I'm convinced the screws are designed to break off. You'll have a hard time not breaking the heads off when you secure it in place, so no need to worry about the screws in my opinion. Hopefully, unlike me, you confirmed your solar ground mount location and your ballast or mounting base before you assembled the bright mount kit. I played around with several installation sites, but first they needed to be somewhere with no shade in all four seasons, and so I used the Sunseeker app to check the position of the sun in the southern sky for all seasons. 
If you live south of the equator, obviously you'll be looking north, not south. I finally settled on installing them just to the side of my existing solar array. I double-checked and photographed this area in all but the winter season. And there was no shading evident, but it turns out the only shading was late in the day and the depth of winter. But I can deal with that since the winter power demand is a lot lower than the summer power demand. I seriously looked at several ground mount base options, and the recommended preferable base in the instructions is a square hole filled with a concrete block for ballast using the anchor screws provided in the kit. I recommend that you follow the instructions if you want to meet the stated wind rating and you want to make your local code enforcement people happy. For me, I can't easily get a concrete truck into my property to fill a dozen holes with concrete, so I sought other options. I experimented with concrete pads, and they were too wobbly. So I tried adding ground anchors to chain them down, and they still moved around too much for my liking. Kudos to Average Joe and a couple of other solar YouTubers who mounted their bright mount kit directly on the tops of posts. After running the numbers, I felt this method was the best value and most secure per dollar cost. I finally chose treated 6x6 posts, and I purchased them at Lowe's or Home Depot because both carry them. Uh, but get a strong friend for help because they're heavy. Hey, take your time determining where you want to put the post bases for the bright mount rack. Each rack requires four pads. The bases of the rack are around four and a half by five inches. So anything less than the top of a six by six post, which is five and a half by five and a half inches, probably won't work. The manual suggests the rack feet be spaced 51.2 inches apart. But this should be more if you're using the extension kit. The extension kit will add another five inches to length, so you need to adjust the feet out a few inches wider to accommodate the extra length. Best move is to start with each pair of the base feet about 52 or 53 inches apart and adjust them as you install the post tops. Remember, the distance between the outer post in one kit and the outer post in the second kit will be much closer to 36 inches rather than 52 or 53 inches. So carefully evaluate your system and measure twice and flag your holes before you start digging. Speaking of digging, you folks in Florida or those with only sandy soil can go pour a cold drink right now and let the rest of us contemplate the solid earth below our feet. This is where the fun really starts. I grew up working a post hole digger and it's to blame for many of my aches and pains today. Nevertheless, I started out boring into my sandy soil until I hit red clay at about nine inches of depth. After that, we brought out the big guns and fired up the earthquake auger. Unfortunately, the old earthquake auger ain't what she used to be, and on the fifth hole, my wife started giving me that look. It's that look where you know she's thinking, we're going to be out here for weeks, and all I'll hear about is your sore back and shoulders until Christmas. Well, she put her foot down and insisted that we get a bigger hammer. She also suggested hydraulics might make it easier, so I drove down to my local independent tractor dealer. He got me fixed up with a new PTO auger. Now I know some of you will say, hey, buddy, what if we don't have a PTO auger? My suggestion is to find some strong friends or make a party of it, or simply just go to the Thumbtack app and hire this part out. Once again, my better half was right, and we were back in business drilling holes and hitting a few tree roots. But in no time, our dozen holes were done. She told me the auger had already paid for itself. So I was happy. <laughs> One minute, 30 seconds. One minute, 30 seconds for a three-foot hole. So now you got your rack built, and you know where the holes go. For my post, I cut three posts out of a 12 foot long six by six post. Four 12 foot six by six posts gave me 12 four foot posts, and that saves some money. But feel free to use taller posts, but be sure to calculate the height because you're gonna be lifting the panels up there and they get heavy after a while. To make them look cooler and possibly discourage premature wood rot or termite buffet, I coated my post in a lovely used motor oil stain. This choice is optional, and it may have just been my justification for keeping old motor oil around for recycling or reuse. Hey, you do you, and let your environmental consciousness or self-loathing be your guide. So after the oil bath, I sunk the two end posts around 30 to 32 inches into the ground and concreted them in with a wide hole. I then ran a level line from one to the other and attempted to get the other post in so the tops were level with the string line. The post ended up sticking out of the ground maybe 16 to 20 inches because the ground was uneven, but the tops were level with the string line. The height chosen was the minimum I felt I could easily get a weed trimmer or mower under them, and you could easily go up higher with a post if you don't mind lifting the panels up higher. Going up higher would likely give you better by facial performance, but me personally, I focus on maximizing the front panel performance first, and then any by facial gain is lawn yop, as they say in Louisiana. As far as additional security from potential uplift, I purchased 40-inch ground anchors, which I could install and change to the ground mounts for additional stability in the event the posts were not installed secure enough. 
So far, it's not been needed, but I may add those later for peace of mind. So now you have your posts in level to your string line, and they're spaced correctly, and you're ready to bolt the bright mount kit onto the top of the post. I looked at a lot of screw options, and longer and fatter is better. I went with three to four inch screws, but five to six inches will work too. I started with just two screws per post to make sure they were all in place properly before adding the third and fourth screw and securing them in permanently. Make sure to adjust the tilt the same way on every bright mount kit so that you can see that they're all level. Once you have the bright mount kits mounted in place, you need to use a tape measure and mark the very center of the kit if you're using one kit, or the very center of the entire array if you're using multiple kits. Use tape or a Sharpie pen you, so you can easily locate that center point. To the right or left of that center point is where you want to start mounting your first panels and working your way towards the outside, assuming you're mounting an even number of panels. The bright mount kit comes with three sizes of solar panel mount flaps. These will be 30, 35, or 40 millimeter mount flaps, so you need to know which is best for the size of your solar panel. Use the Allen wrench that came with the bright mount kit and tighten them as you get two panels together. Once you get to the end, use the special end clamps and tighten those securely. Now that you've installed your bright mount kit, you just need to wire them up to your system. The racks come with grounding lugs and plates you can attach your ground wire to. Every one solar design is different, so I'll just show you how I did mine, and I'll give you that tip I told you about how to save 50% on the cost of wiring. Since I love a challenge, I've placed my panels 175 feet away from my inverter. That's a long way to carry DC power, and the more wire means more money. However, since the typical voltage was so high, 300 to 450 volts typically, the thinner wiring can be used. In my case, I opted for the 10-gauge THHN wiring, and then I ran all that in a two-inch conduit underground. I wanted to have plenty of room for future arrays, so I included three pairs of wires and a pre-run length of mule tape in case I need to pull more wire in the future. The really hard part was digging a 30-inch trench the entire length through my backyard. Digging anywhere else, you should obviously call 811 to mark any underground lines or pipes. In my case, I placed every single underground wire and pipe on this property since it was first cleared after the settlers left. So in my case, I felt like I was safe. Don't do it my way because I hit the septic line even knowing where it was. Luckily, no damage. So we proceeded to lay the conduit in the trench and then we ran a string through the pipe. You may have seen the vacuum method used before, but it's really effective and it's funny to watch. One end of the string is attached to a plastic bag and your project partner puts a shop back on the conduit at the other end. Then you drop the string and bag in the, the far end of the conduit and the vacuum pulls the bag and the string through the conduit. Hey, hang on to that string because it moves really fast. Okay, turn it on. That's it. When we finally got the string through the conduit, we used the string to pull the mule tape through, and then we began to pull the seven wires through the conduit with the mule tape. Pulling the wires takes a person pushing on one end and pulling on the other end. My spouse suggested that the one with the biggest arms pulls. I was able to temporarily hook up and run the new panels in my system, and they've done a great job so far. I have a combiner box and a DC ice flare switch, which I still need to install to the back of the array, and I'll finish that up and the indoor conduit to my two EG4 6000 XP inverters as soon as the weather clears up. And now, how to save how to hundreds, hundreds of dollars, dollars off wiring for your solar system. If you've bought wire at the big box store lately, you probably had to apply for a loan. One 500 foot roll of 10 gauge THHN wire was about $150 last time I was there. I ran into this last year, so I started trying to locate good wire for solar for less money. The secret I discovered was actually on eBay. Many commercial sellers of new wire spools will often get products with cracked or damaged spools that they can't sell to contractors at full price. They will regularly sell off these damaged products to wholesalers who will resell commercial overstock inventory. You can find them regularly selling spools of perfectly good wire for solar on eBay at one half less the cost of retail at your local big box store. So I bought at least 10 spools between 315 and 500 feet in length at bargain prices as low as $50 for 500 feet of 10 gauge wire. It's pretty cheap. For heavier gauge wire, Check around with your local area electric supply houses. Most will gladly sell to you retail. I like City Electric Supply, and they've been really great to work with for any electrical needs. In the end, there wasn't much difference in the cost between my DIY solar mount and the bright mount system I built. Some prices have changed since the first rack, but the total cost was around $1,300 to $1,400 based on the prices I paid at the time. You might be able to build a ground mount rack to hold your solar panels cheaper, but I doubt it would be adjustable, and it would be as well anchored and stable as we've achieved with the bright mount rack 
and the ground manifold. Any larger array might get the cost down more per pound, but you're still going to be in the $2,000 to $5,000 cost pretty quickly. So what do you think about this bright mount, ground mount solar rack build? Do you have a way to do it significantly cheaper with store-bought materials? Let us know in the comments. The one thing DIY solar lovers enjoy is learning new ways to get free energy with less upfront costs and investment. I think the bright mount is easier to install than my vertical DIY system, but your results might vary. If you want to order two or more bright mount kits and save 50 bucks, just use the link in this video description. I've also put a link in the video description that if you click on it, you can save $50 on any purchase over $500 from Signature Solar. So take advantage of that. We really appreciate when you use our affiliate links as it motivates us to create more great DIY solar content for you. We really hope you enjoyed this video on our Bright Mount Solar Array project, and I sure appreciate you subscribing and joining the channel for more great content. I'm Michael from Terry Hill Farm and Two Steps from Off Grid. Thanks for watching.